Aloha and welcome to Ehana Kako. We're here every week on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute. Well, anyone who's been watching the political scene since 2016 knows that there has been a Republican sweep throughout the nation. We've become a red nation in terms of the United States Senate, the United States Congress, and the President of the United States. All across the nation, Republican houses have grown in terms of their number of members, except in one place the state of Hawaii. The state of Hawaii has become bluer than it already was. The state of Hawaii lost its only senator who was a Republican and uh, one member of the House of Representatives and recently another member of the House of Representatives who was a Republican became a Democrat. So in the state of Hawaii our state house, our state uh, senate, our governor's mansion, our unions and the powers that be are Democrat. Now, what does that portend for the state of Hawaii? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? You know, many of the friends of mine who are Democrats are not jumping up and down triumphantly. Uh, there is a lamenting of the absence of a two-party system, something that is robust and makes both parties in the political arena even better. And in that light, the Republican Party and its losses in Hawaii have been the subject of media both at a national level and locally. Here today with us is the United States Congressional candidate for uh, the Republican Party of Hawaii in 2016 who ran for Mark Takai's seat. She's also involved in party organization and she's going to give us her insights today as to where the Republican Party is and where it's going. So please welcome to the program Colonel Shirlene Ostroff. Shirlene, aloha. Welcome to the aloha, program. Aloha, Kelly. Thanks for having me on the show. Well, really glad to have you here. I, I admire your Madeline Albright type Thank you. brooch over there. Thank you. <laughs> is that is that a special brooch? It is. It's a um, it's a and hand brooch from oh, Washington D.C. And I. Thanks for noticing. And I it's, believe those are the ones, uh, well, that's where uh, Madeline Albright actually absolutely. got many of her brooches. Absolutely. Well, you've served as a full colonel in the United States Air Force. Yes. You're in a business as a CEO yourself. Yes, sir. My goodness. Well, why did you throw your rink into the hat and run for a congressional seat in 2016? You know, um, just like so many of us looking at the political scene, we, we wanted change. Uh, I think... Uh, well, from my perspective, having lived all over the country, mm -hmm. I experienced a lot of different uh, political uh, majorities um, from where I lived. And once I got back to Hawaii, I just noticed there was a real lack of Republican, um, Republican representation in government. And so as the 2016 election came on and I noticed that Mark Takai's open seat was going to be unchallenged by another Republican. Um, I couldn't let that stand. It's the, probably the military in me to take on a mission to ensure <laughs> that there was well, uh, the proper representation. And that was quite a mission. N a huge mission. And you came to that really with uh, more of a national or a nationwide understanding of what the Republicans stand for. And, and it seems as though you had that branding with you before you came back to Hawaii. Well, what exactly attracted you to align yourself with the Republican Party? Well, when I left uh, Hawaii to go mm -hmm. to university and then onward to my military career, I actually believe that most uh, people from Hawaii thought like I did. Our cultures are conservative by nature. Um, the way we approach uh, the way we approach politics, hard work, self reliance, and all all of that. I believe that most people thought like I did. So watching uh, the Hawaii political scene from afar with great interest and then coming back to make Hawaii my permanent home, I noticed a huge shift in thinking. And therefore, it really motivated me to get back to what I believed is the core values of our Hawaii community. Um, the Again, the conservative cultures that make up our melting pot of Hawaii. Well, now, you obviously have seen what has happened with the Republican Party across the nation and the growth in numbers, the acquisition of both houses in Congress and so forth. But the opposite move here in Hawaii, where we've become bluer than blue, yes. what are your thoughts about that? Why do you think that's the case? You know, I think that there's a challenge that there's a failure of the Republican Party, at least in recent years from when I've been watching it with great interest, to communicate and challenge issues that affect our community every day. Things like soaring taxes and increasing regulations on small businesses and an economy that can't provide for jobs for like my own children and grandchildren to come back and make Hawaii our permanent home. 
When you talk about a failure of communication, obviously that leads to the perceptions that people in the general public have about the Republicans. What, what, what do you think those perceptions are? Well, I think most people um, see Republicans in the old school um, lens of uh, the unions are one party and the people of Hawaii are one party and um, the other party is by the ruling class. And I think that people without the proper education and engagement and constant communication of what Republican values are in this state, people are going to go with that. And, and the unions are great. Um, great organizations for our community, but they, they're they happy to ensure that those misperceptions are, are perpetuated. Well, maybe 63 years ago it was the yes, case that maybe Republicans years ago. were the ruling party, yes. you know, more or less, and that uh, the party of the people that emerged and brought us the unions was the Democratic Party, and the yes. party that brought together ethnic groups and so forth. Yes. But today, well, how true would you say that image is? Well, again, I, I wouldn't think that that's true at all. Um, now, the image, I think the perception is certainly there. Um, I, I have to say that as a Filipino-American daughter of immigrants, I don't see too many people like me who stand up and say they're Republicans. On the same note, I believe that almost everyone who is like me shares my very conservative values. And so there's a, there's a disconnect there in the political scene from what people believe in faith-based groups and other conserv conservative organizations. And that's the, the link that we have to close. Well, let, let's get into that then. Uh, tell me what it is that you and or Republicans actually stand for. Uh, let's say we clear the table completely of perceptions and so yes. forth and start from scratch. What would be the one f first piece of that that you stand for? I think... Uh, Hard work and self-reliance um, clearly is a hallmark of our message that needs to be articulated throughout the community. And again, if you look at even, if you look at uh, groups throughout the minority groups throughout the community, they believe in the same thing. It's, it's. Uh, I talk to my Filipino friends and relatives. They believe that that's our culture, um, and yet it's not connecting politically. So things like that, things like security. And M national defense, national military defense, security. strong immigration. Mm -hmm. Ironically, most people, I'm the daughter of immigrants, and most immigrants believe in a very strong immigration system that people cannot cut in line and, and take advantage of a weak system. So it's all very ironic that the very values that people believe internally do not translate very well on the ballot. What I hear you saying is that the things that the Republican Party authentically stands for are things that a majority of people in Hawaii actually do believe and stand for. Earlier you said that uh, most people in Hawaii are conservative. Let's take that word and, okay. and parse it out. Okay. In, in what way do you think that, that most people are conservative? Or even, let's not use the word at all. Well, let, let's talk about what you mean by that. So I believe that people want to have a say in how they are governed. I believe that people want to um, make sure that we address the constant interference of government in our lives. And I think that people want to have, um, want to address the issues from a much more, uh, an approach that doesn't depend on the government. That maybe some of these, some of these challenges could be taken on through the business community or volunteer organizations or faith-based organizations as a solution rather than encumbering the federal and state government or, or even the county governments with having to, to figure out the solutions of problems that we feel that we could handle in a totally different way. So you're talking about having a, a robust economy built upon hardworking people here in Hawaii as the basis of, of, of our strength, our prosperity, rather than going to Washington all the time seeking federal handouts. Absolutely. And so forth. Well, you know, uh, that, that's a strong message at a time now when we see that because of the economy and the new federal administration that cut, there are going to be cuts to federal handouts to Hawaii. Yes. Our economy here in the state itself is challenged so that our government isn't able to prov provide enough. Yes. W what message do you bring for the building the economy? Well, I think that um, you know, there are people who want to have 
their small businesses and their stake in in the peace of Hawaii. And again, uh, these incredible taxes that are going to suffocate us and increasing regulations on small businesses discourage people actually from being able to grow the economy and their own economy, which I think is key in, in these solutions. If we get these taxes under control and if we talk about uh, decreasing regulations for our small businesses, I believe that this growth and ingenuity and entrepreneurship will directly translate to helping to solve the issues that are plaguing our community today. Well, many of the values you talk about, I think, are embraced by most people in Hawaii. Like most small businesses in Hawaii, whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, yes. if you're a business owner, you, you don't want to have more taxes on you. You don't want to have more regulations on True. you. You want the government backing you, and you don't True. want uh, big business, so to speak, to be getting advantages that marginalize you. But what I suspect you believe is that there needs to be a party that advocates for that. The, there needs to be a party for ad, that advocates for that little guy. Absolutely, and I think that there's that's what's missing. That communication, that message where small business owner um, can look at two parties and say, well, this actually represents me better. What they're seeing now is a very prolific one party and another party that doesn't come out and say strongly what they stand for. And therefore, it doesn't translate challenging the political status quo. Well, we talk about two-party system, and in the yes, ideal sir. world of a pure two-party system, yes, sir. the balance is 50-50, 50% 50 /50, one party, 50% yes. another. We're not even close to that. Not We're like 98% to 2% yes. in terms of public officials, maybe even 99% yes. in terms of power holders throughout the state and a 1% for the opposition party. Without touting the virtues of being Republican, yes. Why is it important to have a stronger second party? Not even 50-50, maybe even 30-70. Well, why is that so important? Well, I think that anybody would tell you, and friends who are Democrats will tell me, that that challenge and that uh, professional tension is needed in order to have the best ideas. As they say, iron sharpens iron. And there is no political discourse when there's only one party coming up with all the ideas. It is important for us to have the opposition voice in order for everyone to benefit from the best policies possible. So a strong two-party system is actually good for everybody. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing a bit about why you're in politics and yes. what Republicans stand for and what the message really is. When we come back from a break, would you be willing to share what your vision is for going forward and, and dealing with the, managing the image of the Republicans and providing the substance of Republicans in a two-party system? It would be my pleasure. All right. Thanks. My guest today is Colonel Shirlene Ostrov, who ran for Congress in 2016 and is now involved in helping to organize the Republican Party for its future. I'm Kili'i Akina on Think Tech Hawaii's Ehana Kako. We're going to take a quick break. Don't go away. I'm Carol Mon Lee, and I want to welcome you to our newest series called Education Matters, where we will explore education-related topics that touch everyone, not just formal programs in K-12 and higher education, but also broader issues and information that affect our community. Aloha, my name is John Waihe'e, and I used to be a part of all the things that you might be angry at. I served in government here and may have made decisions that affects you. So I want to invite you in. I want to invite you in to talk story with me and some very special guests every other Monday here at Talk Story with John Waihe'e. Come on in, join us, express your opinion, learn more about your state, and then do something about it. Aloha. Welcome back from that quick break. You're watching a Hanakako here every week on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. I want to say mahalo to Jay Fidel and all the great staff, the wonderful team, the board members, and the whole community that brings Think Tech Hawaii to the world every week. Think Tech produces about 35 hours of original content broadcast from downtown Honolulu, and it goes all the way across the world. 
uh, we like to say at the Grassroot Institute, e hanaka ko, which means let's work together. Because think of the terrible alternative if we don't work together. So let's work together for a better economy, government, and society. Somebody who's committed to that is Shirlene Ostrov, Colonel in the United States Air Force, CEO of a small business here in Hawaii, and highly involved in politics. Uh, not as an office holder, but someone who did run for U.S. Congress and now wants to take on reforming or reshaping uh, and giving great vision to the Republican Party. So we're back again with Shirlene. Great. Thank Shirlene, you. you know, you're, you're aware of the negative press the Republican Party has received. Yes. And specifically the Hawaii Republican Party, even yes. in national news that has written about Absolutely. the Hawaii Party. And locally, it's been called irrelevant, it's been called outdated, not in touch with the people. and. Uh, why would anyone want to be part of it? And let me just ask you, why, why do you commit yourself to remaining part of the Republican Party? That's a great question. I think that it is unfortunate, uh, the inaccurate picture painted of the Republican Party. In so the you, most, take, you take issue with what's I being reported in the press? I absolutely take issue with what's being reported in the press. Um, in great uh, unfortunate incidents that led to the uh, defection of one of our um, of our minority leader, our former minority leader, to Representative the Beth Fukumoto. Absolutely, changing uh, parties quite changing recently. Changing partner parties, but unfortunately, on the way out, um, painting a very unfortunate and inaccurate picture of uh, the Republicans being racist and sexist. Now, I, I was talking with you a little bit earlier about, about this, and, and yes. you didn't take exception to her right to change parties. Absolutely not. Or her, her right to stand up for a, a view contrary to her party or, or any of that. Your concern was very specific with something that you believe that she has asserted about the Republican Party, and what is that? That, that uh, the Republican Party is in its core racist and sexist and doesn't allow for this independent thought. Quite frankly, again, I wish her the best, but she she had that inaccurate picture in her mind and therefore could not lead the party as a minority, as our minority leader. I, I wish her the best, and again, it's unfortunate that she perpetuated a very inaccurate view of the party. So I don't mean to put this in a, a need to respond to a negative yes. way, yes. but how then would you characterize the party if, if the party is not racist or sexist, what, what would your response be? Our party um, is inclusive, as recent the recent election shows, um, the recent uh, election cycle and the election of President Trump shows. I think our party is inclusive, and our party is understanding the underlying problems that uh, Americans face. So it's not uh, necessarily engaged in sound bites and and it, it's it's going after the core values which are the underlying problems that are pervasive in our not just our political system but plaguing all Americans today now in terms of representation in the party uh, currently now in, in the moving on of uh, Beth Fukumoto out of the position of minority leader uh, by the vote of the minority members in the House. Yes. Uh, another, Beth is a minority uh, woman. Yes. Andrea Topolo, who has replaced her in the House as minority yes. leader, is a minority woman. Yes. And you are a minority woman. Yes. Uh, is this just narrow representation or... or uh, uh, does this speak for the party as being a party of inclusiveness? I think it speaks to the party uh, as a party of inclusiveness. Remember, the chairman of the Republican National uh, Committee is a woman, uh, R Ronna Romney. And um, I, I believe Andrea Tapula is doing a great job as a millennial Polynesian woman. And sh her job is she needs to stay and do the great job she's doing on the floor, in legislation and concentrate on getting that very important legislative agenda to counter the Democrats. Sure. Yes. Now you've taken seriously w working to help build the Republican Party in Hawaii. I have. And you've recently made a, an announcement. What is that? I have. Uh, I am privileged to be able to run for the chairman of the Hawaii Republican Party. Now that is going to take place when? The election. The election will take place at our state uh, convention on May 13th on Kauai. 
and uh, that's when all of our uh, all of our Republican delegates come together and choose the next uh, leadership of the party. Well, maybe this is an appropriate time then to ask, well, what are the next steps required for the Republican Party to gain ground here in Hawaii in order to defy those reports in the media that it's irrelevant and it has no impact? Absolutely. I think the first thing we need to do is start a very serious ground campaign. I think that we need to use the Republican National Committees as our model for success. In 2012, after the President Obama election, mm -hmm. party leaders came together and did a post-mortem. And what they did was they created a 365-day-a-year party that used the best digital and data systems to look at the population and decide where they could possibly make a difference. They went there, boots on the ground, communicated all those values of uh, self-reliance, security, hard work. That's the hallmark of Repu the Republican Party, and that's how the election map turned red. So it that was, was a significant factor in the victories that w were uh, experienced in November of 2016. Absolutely. Yes. So w what is it that they did that you can import here to Hawaii? Well, they've already committed to importing that digital and data system. All right. Um, and uh, again, engaging the business community and many business leaders have already approached me and said, we, we are committed to help you raise the funds to bring the party back financially, which is incredibly important. And then secondly, um, having a brand where volunteers would come out and, and help us and attract the best and brightest to run for office. Now, That's you important. talk about volunteers and you mentioned millennials earlier. Yes. This, this state didn't vote for, for President uh, 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 Trump, nor for Ma Madam Secretary Hillary, Correct. it voted for Bernie Sanders. Yes. What are your uh, thoughts about being able to capture the hearts and minds of the, the many Bernie Sanders supporters, many of whom are of the millennial generation? You know, that's a, that's a great question, but I do believe that engagement with these young people mm -hmm. who are very smart, and we underestimate the millennials, they love to engage, I'm raising, I have twin 16 year olds who are going to be seniors in high school and we have this discussion with them and their friends all the time. And then our colleagues who have uh, uh, college age kids, they love to hear why the Republican brand is better for them in the end. Um, they just have to be told, engaged and uh, communicated with often. And quite frankly, we have to communicate with them in the way they respond best, social media and things like things like that is how they respond best. So that whole uh, network of communication efforts is my first and foremost my priority. How do you navigate the fact that here in Hawaii the populace uh, doesn't come out uh, rallying around President Trump the way they rallied around President o Obama? There's a brand issue here, and I'm not talking so much about the policies yes. of President Trump or the Republican policies per se, but given the, that brand issue here in Hawaii, how do you navigate around it as, as you're trying to build a party that attracts many people to it? Well, I think that the party does have a branding problem and the inclusivity, uh, the mission of inclusivity will improve that. Uh, quite frankly, I think that people want to see a party that would represent them. And so people, I'm a local girl born and raised here in mm -hmm. Hawaii, they can see themselves in me and therefore can listen very easily or much easier to um, a difference in ideas if they feel like, hey, she was born and raised in the pineapple fields in Mililani, and therefore she, she knows what we're, she's talking about from, from my perspective. Give me a, a, a glimpse of the party now. Uh, what are some of the challenges that the party organization I itself I is facing? Some of that has it become subject of news in the media yes. and so forth. And I, I don't want to take a focus away from the mission of the Republican yes. Party, but if you're running for chair, you're going to have to face some challenges. Love to know what those are and what your solutions yes. are. The party is is unfortunately terribly unorganized. Mm -hmm. As we see in this season where we should have organized precincts and districts, we have seen a, a very haphazard approach to it. And in fact, we still have districts and precincts that are entirely unorganized that focus has to come back. Um, organizational, uh, organizational methods, raising funds, communication and outreach and engagement in the communities is what's important. And quite frankly, someone getting in front and confronting the, uh, the agenda from an opposition point of view in a very credible and legitimate way.
I would think, based upon what you've said today, you've got two levels of challenge. You, just what you've mentioned, yes. you've got the party itself, a yes. party problem, but an even bigger problem, and that is the place of the Republican Party in the broader society, Yes, it, a political problem, so yes. to speak. What are your thoughts on how to, trans how to uh, face that challenge, the political challenge that the party has? So the pol political challenge will have to be addressed only after we organize properly. Mm -hmm. There is, quite frankly, uh, we have to get our house in order. And that, first and foremost, is uh, the business at hand, transparency, communication and governance, proper governance, in order to give confidence to donors, volunteers, Republicans, independents, and those who are looking at the agenda to have confidence that this is some this is an organization that can truly represent me and then as we get more people into this bigger tent we can attract the best and the brightest to run for office and that will translate to better policies it's a system it's not going to happen overnight uh, we, we've got we we have to know that this is going to be uh, we're in it for the long haul. What are the strengths that you bring to this challenge uh, of getting ready for the long haul, of being able to get the house in order, so to speak, yes. in or order to move on with the mission of the Republican Party? So I have um, formal education, like a, a bachelor's in political uh -huh. science, an MBA, a master's of science of organizational management that directly translate to helping the party, not to mention two plus decades of leading large organizations globally. Well, with, the, yes. with the same challenge. So I have uh, the education, the experience, and now the desire and the ability to put a team together to strengthen the party. And that's the key. I know I can't do this by myself. We've already put together a team of people who share that same vision. Well, good to hear. Well, it's about leadership. And yes, sir. I thank you for devoting your life to leadership. Thank you very much, sir. Our guest today, Shirlene Ostroff, Colonel in the U.S. Air Force, the CEO here in Hawaii is somebody who believes that it's important to get involved in the political system and make a difference. We take our hat off to her for that, and we'll see you next week. I'm Kili'i Akina on Ehana Kako on the ThinkTech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Aloha.